The menopause is a transition that's going to happen to every single woman in their life. Every woman who has periods at some point are going to stop having periods and then they are in menopause. So the definition of menopause is 365 days from the last period that you have. So before that, it's perimenopause, but actual menopause is 365 days from the last period that you have. And that is if the period is not due to any other health issues. So if it's literally just due to your period stopping. So if it's not, um, if no other health issues is causing that to stop. Um, perimenopause is the transitional period before menopause. It normally starts five to 10 years before menopause starts. <laughs> and early menopause is when actual menopause, not perimenopause, when actual menopause occurs before the age of 45. Postmenopause, so you have menopause on that day, and then 12 months after that is menopause, and then postmenopause is after that 12 month period. So it's 12 months. So you've got your period stopping, 12 months later you hit menopause, 12 months later you hit postmenopause. And medically induced menopause is when menopause is caused by some kind of medical intervention. So that could be having hysterectomy or having uh, cancer treatment, which they then send you into medically induced menopause. This is the joyful one. This is the effects. Yes. This is the effects. We're not going to call them symptoms. We're going to call them effects of menopause. There are 34 recognised effects I'm just going to read them out. <laughs> so we've got hot flashes, night sweats, irregular periods, loss of libido, vaginal dryness, fatigue, difficulty concentrating, sleep disorders, hair loss, weight gain, changes in odour. I can't say this word. Parathesis. That is uh, like a, a burning sensation on skin. You know, like discomfort. Uh, depression, anxiety, irritability. It's just, oh, it's just joyous. <laughs> Mood swings, panic disorder, headache, osteoporosis, breast pain, joint pain, getting electric shocks, feeling feel of electric shocks, burning in your mouth, muscle tension, dizziness, incontinence, bloating, allergies, brittle nails, memory lapses, irregular heartbeats, gum problems, digestive problems and itchy skin. That is all. I counted them up before. I've got 19, I think. Oh, was it more than that? 21. Anyway, it was a lot of those symptoms. Um, so no wonder we all feel like we might be losing our minds slightly and going a little bit mad. Um, so these are what you can get. Some people won't get any. Some people get them all. Some people have some. You'll have one or two. But yeah, that, just to be aware, that is what we're facing. And then we've got the impacts of your health. Um, Cardiovascular disease, so the risk of cardiovascular disease rises, and that is because oestrogen, um, partly due to the fact that oestrogen is thought to have a positive effect on the inside of the arteries, so the inner wall. Uh, also, another side effect, effect of menopause is that we, uh, it's associated with increasing our cholesterol. So those two things mean that we're of an increased risk of cardiovascular disease. Bone health. Um, so in the post-menopause, so that period after 12 months after your, you hit menopause, um, women can lose 20% of their bone density within five to seven years. You get an increased risk of osteoporosis and bone-related diseases, and then that also leads to increased risk of fractures and breaks. I'm going to come, I'm just going to tell you all of this, and we're going to talk about what we do about it afterwards. <laughs> uh, pelvic floor health. Yay. Um, so that can lead to incontinence, prolapse, various prolapses, vaginal dryness, lack of libido, and the key one, I think, for a lot of women in this room, lower back pain. Yeah. If your pelvic floor, if, does everyone know what the pelvic floor is? So it's, it's, it's basically a bit of a girdle of muscles and tissue that hold everything together around here. If that is weak, it can cause lower back pain. So if you are suffering from lower back pain, obviously go and see your GP, but it might be worth considering that it could be a pelvic floor that is triggering it. All these things can lead to a lack of confidence, lack of motivation to move. So if you think you're going to wet yourself when you come to the gym, you might not want to come. If you think that you've got, if your body odour is changing, that might make you paranoid and not want to come and it can affect your confidence. 
One in three women will encounter stress urinary incontinence, and this is including athletes. I'm very open that when I go for a run nowadays, I'm fine until I stop. And I literally stop and go, oh my God. And then I have to stand there for five seconds and then I can go again. The amount of times I've nearly been caught having a wee in Merley's field is ridiculous. I have to really seem to think about it. I nearly, actually, I nearly knocked on your door the other day, Emma. Because I was running right past your house. I was like, I wonder if she's in. <laughs> you were in. <laughs> yeah. I don't know where all of you live. And if you're on my running tour. <laughs> Um, impacts on weight gain. So as this is, is it menopause or is it aging? Because as we get older, both men and women, we require less calories to keep our bodies going. Um, so it, it may feel like it's harder to lose fat than it was before. So we get a reduction in fat free ma uh, mass. So your skeletal muscle mass starts to reduce. You lower, your metabolic rate goes lower. Um, and you get reduced physical activity, energy expenditure. Now, don't really focus too much on that because what we do here mitigates all of this. Um, this one's quite interesting. You get an increase in visceral fat, so that's the fat that's stored deep in your belly and around your organs, but also you get an increase, a change in the storage of your subcutaneous fat. <laughs> Can I get all these words out? So that is the fat that's just below your skin. So that is normally stored all over your body, as we start getting older in the menopause, that moves to around your trunk and your midriff. So, unfortunately, that starts to get bigger. Now, the, the mental health effects with, will start with stress. So, again, this is what comes first, chicken and the egg. We're getting older. So, hormonal changes may alter you, the way that you react to certain situations and events. The effects of menopause, so your hot flashes, your pelvic floors, your lack of sleep, etc., they can have an effect on your energy, your resilience, your ability to manage emotions and respond to situations and events. However, we're getting to an age where outside of menopause, life is starting to get a little bit more difficult. We might have teenage children. We might have children leaving home. We might have elderly parents who need more care, might have changed in our career. So things, is it, is it that that's causing more stress or is it menopause? That's the question. Um, but definitely stress can be um, exacerbated by the effects that we have in menopause. So all the things that I've listed, they can all have massive impact on our stress level. Anxiety and depression. So 40% of women around menopausal age report, and I've put that in big capital letters because they, they report, 40% report depression, anxiety symptoms to their GP. That could be a lot more who don't report it. Um, so it could be increased levels of stress, as mentioned before. Um, it could be the feelings of being out of control about what's happening to you because your body is changing and there's nothing you can do about it, which leads you feeling out of control. And it could be negative thoughts that you're having around aging and around the menopause. So with my clients, I talk about a stress bucket. And all of these things, what they do is they fill up your stress bucket. I'm just going to draw a little picture on here. Give me 10 seconds. So if you imagine in your brain, I hope, I hope Adam didn't need that. Because <laughs> it's gone. If you imagine that in your brain, you have got a bucket I hope this pen works now. No! Go down on the board. It's because you've used a wet wipe on it. I've just, yeah, no, I've just done a dry wipe on it and it's still not... No. Lauren's going to get another one. So if you imagine you've got a stress bucket in your head, basically, and that bucket is filling up all day with all the negative thoughts that you're having. And it starts to fill up and fill up and fill up. If you put into that stress bucket all the stuff that I mentioned about children, aging parents, thank you. So, oh, it doesn't really work very well either. <laughs> I'm gonna fall over these balls, aren't I? So this is the stress bucket in your brain throughout the day, everything is <laughs> piling in. This is a load of rubbish, I shouldn't have done that. You might already have big things in here, things that are going on. Friends, I've got friends who are very, very seriously poorly. That is in my stress bucket. I've got my mother ringing me just because she's in Portugal and she can't figure out how to 
make a Kindle turn pages rather than scrolling up. <laughs> that has just added to my stress. <laughs> I've got my daughter crying at home and that has added to my stress. So all of those things go in and add to your stress. And then once they start to get into the top and overflowing, that's when we feel like we can't cope and that's when we feel like we've got those feelings of anxiety and depression happening in our lives. So it doesn't leave a lot of tolerance but that gets filled up by negative thoughts. So every time you're having a negative thought about your menopause symptoms, guess what happens? It goes in the stress bucket. Every time you think, I can't go to the gym today because what happens if I wet myself? Or what happens if I can't lift the weights? What happens, I'm, I'm, there's gonna be days where you're not gonna be able to do that. That, all those thoughts that you're having, like I'm, I'm no good, I'm, I'm this, I'm that, I'm tired, I'm grumpy, I'm old and up. that's all going in your stress bucket and it's all creating more and more stress in your life now we've got a method for emptying our stress bucket a very natural method and that's called REM sleep so when you go to sleep at night you rerun the events of the day and you turn them from a, um, an emotional memory into an intellectual memory because we've got two parts of our brain I'm not going to go into all of this now I need to shut up and stop talking about this but basically you rerun the events of the day and then that Change, it empties out your stress bucket, it changes those thoughts and emotion, works through them, takes the emotions out of them, and then when you wake up in the morning, you feel a bit better. So, for example, say you've had... Uh, I was going to use the word Dan. Has Dan gone now? I feel bad. <laughs> Dan from accounts, I was going to say. Not, obviously not our Dan, because he's lovely. So, say someone, Dan in accounts at work, has really got on your nerves that day, really upset you, you've come home and you've said to your partner, friend, mother, whoever it is that you would confide in, Dan in the couch, it's blah, 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 and they say, go to sleep, forget about it, and you're like, I'm not going to forget about it. You go to sleep, and then what happens is that you, it goes from emotional memory into an intellectual memory. So when you wake up in the morning, you haven't forgotten about it, but you feel better. It's taken the rawness out of it. That's REM doing its job. But if you've got too much in your stress bucket, REM takes up a lot of energy, so it's restricted to about 20% of your sleep patterns. Too much in here means that you are, your, your brain's encouraged to do more and more of it. So two, one of two things will happen. First thing, your brain's going to ping you awake because it's getting too tired. And it's thinking, this is too much, wake up. So REM sleep is a bit like almost the same brain waves as being wide awake when you're in REM. So your brain's going to ping you awake. And guess what? It's three o'clock in the morning and you're lying there and you feel really miserable and your brain's ticking over and you can't get back to sleep. And it's very, very different to if you just wake up because a child needs you or you wake up because you need a wee. The second thing that happens is that you do too much REM and you wake up in the morning and you are absolutely exhausted. So you feel like you haven't had any rest, you haven't had any sleep and you're really tired and emotional. And that's all down to too much going into this stress bucket. And unfortunately, at this time in our lives, like I said, all the things that we're going through and all of these extra effects of menopause, they're all adding to that stress bucket. So we need to also be looking at managing stress levels as well. Um, I'm going to give you a download at the end if you want to listen to that. Well, we're going to do a relaxation at the end of this anyway, so it'll be a bit like that. That, that mimics REM. So it's a way of encouraging your brain to empty out that stress bucket. I've got this little exercise here. I'll do it now, but this is for moments when you are feeling like that overwhelm's happening. You know, when you're moved, when you, you know that boiling up and you're about to explode at your kids or your husband or your work colleagues. Or... So it's called calm your calm breath exercise. So if you imagine a figure of eight, it's dead simple. You can do it just sitting around. Figure of eight. So you breathe in at the top, so it goes one, two, three, and then out, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's in for three and out for uh, five, basically, but you do it as a figure of eight. And what you do is you start to breathe in, one, two, three, and then out. And you can actually turn that out breath into a mantra in your head and say something like, relax, relax, relax. And then you go again, one, two, three, relax, relax relax. It just lowers, that kind of breathing lowers all your stress levels, brings your heart rate down, and it can really kind of pull you out of those situations where you're feeling like your anxiety is going up or you're overwhelmed and you can't do much about it. Back to the effects of menopause. A lot of these can be made better 
by reducing your stress and exercising. Um, especially stuff like hot flashes, night sweats, fatigue, concentration, sleep disorders, obviously weight gain if we're exercising, um, anxiety, depression, irritability, there's loads, there's so much on there, osteoporosis, we can mitigate against that, we'll come to all that in a bit, but just remember these are just effects and we can do something about them. Um, one good one for night sweats or hot flashes is another breathing exercise, it's dead simple, if you just, all now, just have your tongue. If you can curl your tongue, it's better. If you can't curl your tongue, just have it near the roof of your mouth. And if you take a big, quick breath in, you feel the cool air going across your mouth. And then just slowly. So it's almost like a... And it actually cools you down because you can feel the cool sensation. So that is one to try if you are feeling like, you know, if you're in a situation, in a meeting or something like that, just... Yeah, but backwards. Yeah, so you can feel it's cold on your tongue. I feel like I need it now. Um, so this is the most important thing for me. Awareness is power. Be aware. You're the expert in your own perimenopause, menopausal journey. You know your body more than anybody else. You know what's going on. You've lived in your body for 40 plus years you know what's going on in your body start noticing patterns you can use apps or something to track this i've got an app on my apple watch that i can track my periods i can track my symptoms and this was really powerful for me about a month two weeks ago i started getting really 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 depressed and tired and fatigued at certain points and it happened again two weeks ago and because I was tracking it and I was aware of it and I was making sure that I knew what was happening in my body, I realised it was exactly the morning after I started taking my progesterone. Like that, bump. I was on the floor, I was knackered, I was crying. Poor Adam. <laughs> I'd be crying on it more than anyone. Crying, couldn't cope. There was one day I couldn't even come into work because I was just so low. So that day, rang the doctors. They've changed what I, I use now, so I'm now on patches rather than taking... It all really, and we're trying again, but it's trial and error. But because I was aware of what was going on and I'm aware of the changes and I know what's coming, I've got more power over that. Um, so start getting curious about what's happening and what you need at that time. Is there a pattern? Is there times where you come into the gym and you are not as strong? There will be. Are there times when you're absolutely knackered and all you want to do is just sit on the wine and eat a bar of chocolate? Eat, sit on the wine. <laughs> <laughs> sit on the sofa. Freudian slipped. <laughs> um, and then look at reducing stress. What can you take out of your life that's stressful? What can you stop? What can you pass on to somebody else? Because having stress will have such a positive impact on stuff like your sleep, but also on hot flashes, on bloating. When we're stressed, IBS happens, your tummy goes out, you get bloated. So all these things can be linked to stress. And seek professional help if needed. Speak to your GP about your options, um, whether you can take HRT. If you want to take HRT, maybe you can't take HRT. Maybe you want to go down a more um, holistic route, try different therapies, try osteo... Um, not osteo... What do you call them? Not acupuncture. No, I'm thinking about people who are into herbal stuff. Herbalists, I don't know what they're called. Um, so, yeah, so you see a therapist if you need to. Hypnotherapy and CBT have both been recognised as really effective ways of dealing with the effects of menopause. Exercise and menopause. You know, I talked about those health risks. Cardiovascular disease. Regular exercise is going to reduce your risk of heart disease. Bone health, studies showing that strength training, what we do here, it can play a role in slowing down bone loss and it may actually increase bone density. The earlier you start, the better. But even if you have never done it before, start now because you're gonna protect against that. Um, you're also going to with um, strength training, increasing muscle mass and balance. All of those, you know, all those horrible one leg things that we do. They're all increasing your balance. 
they're all preventing you from having falls when you get older. All those horrible box squats we do, guess what that's teaching you to do in later life? Get off the sofa, stand up, sit down. All of those deadlifts that we do. What's this? Picking up your shopping, picking up your grandkids, going overhead with your whatever, your kids, your grandkids. All of this stuff that we do is just making you bulletproof for future life, which is what we all need. Because we don't want to be losing bone density. We don't want to be losing muscle. We don't want to be starting to have cardiovascular disease. So brilliant. Keep doing it. Keep coming. Um, pelvic floor issues. Oh, that should not be there. Ah, I took that off that one. There we go. See, that's what I mean about there will be issues. Uh, working on your core and learning how to improve your pelvic floor will affect things such as um, stress incontinence and lower back pain. Uh, a lot of stuff about um, doing proper braces during lifts, but also um, I've probably spoken to quite a few of you before about the pelvic floor suction technique. And if I haven't, listen in. So basically, you can all do it now while you're sitting there. If you squeeze your pelvic floor, everyone knows how to do, knows how to do that, don't they? Find your pelvic floor, squeeze it. As you breathe in and breathe out, hold it. As you breathe in again, squeeze it some more. Hold it, breathe out, in, squeeze it some more. So imagine it's like a boa constrictor and it's getting tighter and tighter and tighter. Only do it for about 20 seconds and then let it go. And that is a good one for getting your core, your, your pelvic floor and your core because it gets right in there. Something to also be aware of, you also need to learn how to relax your pelvic floor. We have all walk around, or we all have walked around in our lives, sucking our bellies in. And what that does is that it puts too much tension on your pelvic floor because you're not relaxing it properly. So let your bellies hang out, is what I'm saying. <laughs> Don't worry about sucking them in. Um, yeah. <laughs> But then also know that you can, you can keep it strong. Um, I, I try and do my Kegel exercises. So do I, does anyone know what a Kegel exercise is? It's what the midwives tell you to do. You know, after you, they say, do your pelvic floor, and everyone's sitting, squeezing like that. If you don't, if you never do them, start with them. Do them when you get to traffic lights or when you're on the phone or just now. Just do them now. Um, but you need to, you, we all need to keep going with our pelvic floor because we don't want to be having accidents and we don't want to be having prolapses and we want to mitigate lower back pain and all that kind of stuff. Um, if certain exercises cause you issue with your pelvic floor, please know, especially here, you don't have to do them. There's nothing that you have to do in this gym. If somebody says, if you might notice, especially, I know when Adam and I do this, if we say jump squats, we'll always give you the option of squat to your toes. You don't have to jump. You don't have, if there's certain things that make you think, I really don't want to do that, you don't have to do it. Because do you know what else happens when you've got weak pelvic floor alone? You pass wind. <laughs> so that's probably why in uh, yoga there's lots of tr trumping going on and stuff like that as well when you get into certain positions. So yeah, you don't have to do them again. And do you know we've got toiletries in the changing rooms? There's not... Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get some ten lady if anybody wants to use them, but there are like sanitary pads and stuff like that. So if you do feel really super paranoid and you come in and you think, right, no, I don't feel quite secure today, grab one of them. Just go in, get it, go to the toilet. You don't have to say anything to anyone. But please make use of that. And that thing where you, you think you stink more, there's deodorant there as well, I think. We might need to buy some more on that, but there is. There's men's deodorant there, definitely. Um, weight gain. With regular strength training, you can maintain or even increase your muscle mass, which is going to help you to maintain a healthy weight, burn more calories quickly and avoid injury. Building muscle is really, really important at this moment in time. Yes, is everyone clear on that? <laughs> Build your muscle. Um, Mental health, regular exercise has been very beneficial for your mental health. Increases energy, so you're less fatigued, improves your sleep quality, gives you confidence because he lifting heavy weights is bloody empowering, isn't it? Um, helps you empty out your stress bucket. How many times do you come into a gym or before you go for a run and you're in a really, really bad mood and then you come to the gym or you do some exercise, you do some movement, even just going for a walk and you feel better? 
It's really good for your mental health. Even just walking or running. I once had um, someone I know once put on their Facebook page, why do I always feel like I can write a book after I've been for a run? Because you are relaxing, you're emptying out your stress bucket, you're finding solutions. So what I use in my sessions with, what I'm going to do with you in, in a bit with the relaxation is I'm going to use something called trance. It's a very natural state. We all go into it many, many times. You've probably gone into it about 15 times while, we've, while you've been trying to listen to me. Um, but what you do when you're in that trance state is that you can come up with solutions. You get in that trance state when you are in the gym, when you're running, when you're walking, just when you're focusing on one thing and one thing only. So when you're running, all you can think about is kind of breathe. When you're lifting a heavy weight, all you can think about is, Jesus Christ, this is heavy. Um, the other thing that I talk to about my, with my hypnotherapy clients is the three Ps. And you get that in abundance in this place. So it's positive actions, positive interactions, and positive thinking. Positive actions, lifting the weights, positive interactions, being in a group environment, positive thinking, look how heavy I can lift. I'm doing really well. Sometimes, though, this is the, the positive thinking is the thing that starts to come down and that's what starts filling up that stress bucket. So the times when you come in and you go, I can't lift as heavy, I'm rubbish, I'm, you know, da, 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 that don't, don't do that. Final thoughts. Every woman is different and has a different experience. How it affects you is individual. Some women will get all of the effects. Some women will sail through without a single effect at all. I seem to be the first of that. I seem to have everything. Uh, know your body and get in tune with how you're feeling and go with it. There will be days when you feel amazing and days when you don't. Just go with it. You can't, you've just got to let ride, ride the life. In the words of Ronan Keaton, <laughs> <laughs> life is a roller coaster. You've just got to ride it. Um, just be kind to yourself. If you're coming in here and you don't feel like you're 100%, don't feel like you need to give it 100% because just getting here and moving your body is an achievement to be celebrated. It's brilliant. If you, can, if you can get through that door when you feel like crap, then you're amazing. So do that. <laughs> be good to yourself and know your options if you need to speak to a GP, basically. Everyone's been very quiet. <laughs> Does anyone want to say anything, talk about anything, ask anything, give any anecdotes? Yeah, <laughs> I know. Well, that's the thing, like, I was looking at that list, and do you know what I found? What I found out? So, you know, the vaginal dryness, that can also relate to other parts of your body. So, right on cue, you can get mouth, your mouth can go dry. Dry mouth, dry eyes. Hmm? Dry mouth, dry nose, dry ears. A dry, dry nose, I meant dry eyes. I've said dry nose and pointed to my... <laughs> dry ears. I, keep, I get earache and it turns out... Yeah, it turns out the inner, inner ear canal can get dry and, and irritated. Go figure. So there's, there's so much stuff. But I think the most important thing is... There's 13 million women in the UK suffering with perimenopause and menopause. That's a third of the female population. And it's not talked about enough. Yeah. It's not like it can, my parents' age and my, gra my, my grandma, bloody hell, she would never have mentioned it. My mum probably whispered it. The change. Yeah. We're going to do the change. But it's not, it's not like openly discussed. Some of the men in here tonight was like, you're not saying for the menopause talk? And they're like, oh, you <laughs> And I was like, well, you might need to know it because someone you know is going through it right now. I find it annoying that GP, a lot of GPs don't seem to know much about yeah, it. Yeah, I think that's starting to... I mean, I'm got lucky. Bible, I've got a really good GP. Yeah. They're brilliant. If anyone's at Brackendale Medical Centre around the corner, they're, they're amazing. But there are GP surgeries where they're still doing stuff like saying, I'm going to send you for blood tests, and if your blood's come back with your hormone levels normal, then we're not doing anything about it. But that, my best friend's a GP, so I can't say this. I'm not medically trained. I was told it but, to seven, I was too no, it's Yeah, it's, it's symptoms, symptoms yeah. Fluctuates yeah, it fluctuates too much, yeah. yeah. But all GP surgeons now should have a, a, a named GP. Yeah. 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 So ask to speak to the, the, the person who's... Yeah. 
stage. Exactly, yeah. Stage. Yeah. Which is what Brackendale are very, very good at. Yeah. Um, like I say, I'm not medically trained, so I can't really answer questions about HRT or anything like that. It's worked for me, apart from the progesterone. <laughs> it hasn't worked for others. Um, and then I've got a breast friend with breast cancer who can't take it, and she's just been plunged into this, so she's having to mitigate it all without any any help at all. So it's different for every single person. Just like your periods were different, and just like your if you've had babies, your pregnancies were different. Your post-pregnancy experiences were different. I'm not surprised I've got every symptom on there because my periods were horrific growing up. My pregnancies were horrific and after both my children had really bad postnatal depression. So my hormone levels must be all over the place and no wonder I get all those effects. Whereas other people who sail through the period, sail through the having the babies, then sail, can sail through menopause as well. It, it's totally, totally down to the individual. That's the thing, like, the more we talk about it, the more people will realise, actually, I, don't, I can do something about this and I, can, I don't have to suffer. And I can make changes and take control because this is something... So there's a book that I, I'm going to recommend in a, in a minute. It's by a hypnotherapist. It's a really good book about... It's got diff different exercises in it. It's got those breathing exercises I've talked about. And in some cultures, menopause is seen as a time of wisdom and it's celebrated. In this culture, it's seen as a time of, shh, nobody talk about the change and everyone, you know, and just women, oh, she's having another hot flash, get the fan, you know, all that kind of stuff. And in, in like creatures as well, dolphins, once... A female dolphin has had her babies and then her babies are starting to have babies. She stops being able to reproduce, so they go through menopause. But then they take on the role of leading the pack, school, pod. Thank you. Lead, <laughs> pod. I should know that. We've got pods. They take on the role of leading the pod. So they, they come into this more kind of like um, matriarchal role. So we need to be seeing ourselves as that. We're becoming the more wise and... These things need to happen to us because we can't keep producing babies forever and we, then that means that we can help the younger generations as well just to... God, I'm getting deep now. I'll stop talking about that. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. And it's how you think about it rather than thinking about it like, I hate what's happening to me. It's changing that around of this is a transition that's natural, normal. Everyone is going to have to go through it at some point and I can make an experience that's the best for me, basically. And you can yeah. choose to live it in, exactly. in it yeah, as a freedom yeah. rather than, and, it, as, and as a, a growth rather than it being something that's making you feel smaller, make it feel bigger. It's, it's something new that's happening to us. Weight gets a bigger. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but you, you, if you keep doing that, if you keep doing what we're doing here, you'll mitigate that weight gain. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? <laughs> ah. I mean, obviously, so uh, with that, um, I've not done anything to change my diet at all, and I'm perimenopausal, but what I do do is, the, the odd week I don't, but I try and hit three or four exercise sessions a week, mainly on average about three a week. Did my in-body the other day. And I have gained a little bit of muscle, but I haven't put on any body fat. So that just shows you by doing what we do, you can stay and you can, main, you, can, you can ward off all of this stuff that happens. You don't have to gain weight. You don't have to change what you eat. I haven't changed what I eat. In fact, my diet might have got slightly worse because my sweet tooth has gone through the roof. I can't literally... I wish my kids would eat their Easter eggs because I'm <laughs> ploughing through them. <laughs> oh, they won't. They don't eat them. They only got three. They only got three or four each, and they're still all. I've like literally demolished them. Yeah. 